Gem Berries. My name is Desiree. Welcome back to my channel. It feels so good to say that to you guys. Oh my goodness. It's been so long since I filmed, but I'm back with a bang with a brand new series here on my channel. And it is called Holla Dazzle. What that is going to be is through the months of November through December. I'm going to be serving you guys up some holiday-esque looks as well as maybe trying to do some hauls for you guys and giving you guys some gift ideas for everybody. And I want to upload a couple of videos a week for you guys. Oh, I'm just so excited to do this. I have been thinking about like what I should call it and I haven't found anybody else to call it this. Now I know this is not just a brand new idea out of YouTube. I'm not the first one to do something like this, but I do think the name is a little unique. Like I said, it'll be called Holla Dazzle and it'll be through the months of November through all the way through. I want to try to do New Year's, I think. That way um, we kind of cover all the holidays. And like I said, I'm going to give you guys some looks that'll be full glam. We're going to do some looks that'll be like a little more simplistic for y'all. I mean, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And to start off this look, I decided to do one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time. It actually is my favorite Christmas movie of all time. I was actually binge watching this in October on Netflix. It is How the Grinch Stole Christmas. <laughs> So this look today is a green eye and I call it the Grinch green eye just so we give it a little festiveness to it and yeah I just really oh, it looks so pretty so pretty and I had so much fun filming this for you guys so if you guys want to see this look just stay tuned before we jump into the video as always if you are not already hit that little subscribe button down below and become an honorary part of the Jim Berry fam bam and if you like this video if you like the Holla Dazzle series as I keep uploading them just give this video a thumbs up and you can also leave me a comment down below if you're feeling a little you know a little in the holiday spare one leave me a comment I ain't gonna be mad about it all right, as always, you guys, let's grab those cat ears and our waters, and let's get on in to the video, 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 video. All right, you guys, I've already pre-done my face. I have some setting powder just underneath my eyes and some tart shape tape to set my eyelids. I'm going to be taking the Jaclyn Hill X Morphe Collection High Original Palette, going into the shade Cream Sickle with a big fluffy brush. This is like a burnt orangey yellow shade. I'm going to be taking that on as my transition shade, focusing it on the crease area, mainly all the way up toward my brow, not actually touching my brow, but just toward the general area of my brow. This actually lays the foundation to your eyes to start off with like a light shade and then kind of go darker, darker, darker as we're doing the eyelids. Doing the same thing to the other side, I'm just blending it out all in that crease to eyebrow region, taking it from the outer corner all the way onto the inner corner, and then just going back to the other side to make sure that we have enough pigment on both sides. Once you have finished that, you want to find another brush, just a little bit smaller size fluffy brush this time. And I'm looking for like a certain green color to start the Grinch green eye. And I realized I don't really have it in the original palette. So then it dawned on me that I do have it in the Vault Collection palette. I want to use the color Dark Magic or the palette Dark Magic. Um, this is a really pretty palette if you're really into greens. They do have a couple different green options in there. I'm going to be taking the color Potion, which is like an army, military type green color. It's a little bit lighter. Going in with my brush and just lightly tapping it off, I want to focus this mainly on that outer crease area, kind of going in toward the middle crease. And as you can see, I start by just patting it on and then I'll start to actually blend it once I have enough pigment on the outer corner. Now with this one, you do not want to start out with the inner corner with all the pigment on it because we don't make our eyes look too small. So start with your outer corner and then go middle corner. And then whenever you have just the little lightest of the eyeshadow, that's whenever you want to go ahead and finish it out in the inner corner. And then we're gonna go over to the next side and do the exact same thing, focusing it mainly on that outer to middle corner. Whenever we have a little pigment left, 
then we'll go into the inner corner just to set it all. And then going back and doing the exact same thing again. Normally with these, these shades, I will go back in about two times generally just to make sure that it is all blended out and there's not really a whole lot of patchiness going on because you still are going from a pretty light shade to a pretty darker shade, which we will blend out later on to make sure that both those shades kind of blend together. So after I do my little dance, I'm gonna go looking for a, another brush. This one, I kinda wanna get a fluffy but more domed shape brush that's a little bit smaller. Um, I'm gonna go in with the shade Inside Job. I think that is such a pretty, pretty color to me. And I'm gonna be focusing that on the outer corner of the eye, only going toward the middle, kinda where we just laid that lighter green shade but I'm going to try my best not to go too far in because it is such a dark green shade, but I'm laying it right on top of that lighter shade because the lighter shade was kind of like my transition or like first layer to this shade. Um, Cause like I said, we do not want any patchiness going on. So we want to build up colors instead of going just straight pigment on a blank canvas. And like I said, we were just focusing that on the outer corner of the eye, kind of dragging it out because I kind of do want like more of a fanned eye effect going on here. Once we have that finished, I'm going to go in with the MAC by Patrick Star Powder. I literally love this setting powder. It's my favorite one for my eyes and they're actually coming back out with it, which I'm super excited for. I'm going to take an angled eye brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the outer corner of the eye and I want to draw kind of a white powdered line all the way to my hairline and then retouch up my baking powder and what this is going to do is any more pigment that I put on it will actually catch that fallout as well as give me a shape to my eye of how far I need to go with my eyeshadow. I'm going to be taking the ColourPop No Filter Concealer in this shade Fair Zero Zero. This is the widest shade that you can get. And this is what I'm gonna do um, to kind of clean up the crease, kind of like a mini cut crease as well. So for this, I'm going to layer it onto the lid area, going all the way up to that crease section, just cleaning it up very nicely. Um, but I do wanna leave the dark green shade on the outer corner of the eye. I do not wanna go full cut crease um, because I still want that like deepened shade on the outer corner. And I will never stop doing this now that I've started because it is such a great way to clean up that eyeshadow and make that pigment on your eyelid pop more whenever we put it on there. So once you have finished up both sides and you have them pretty much even and they're looking good, we're gonna go in with a metallic -y glitter glimmer shade. Um, this is called Diva. This is from the Jaclyn Hill palette as well. I'm going to be taking my ring finger and just kind of dipping it into that color. I go back and forth with the methods on how I want to do this. Um, if I do my ring finger, I'll actually just do a little patting. You always want to pat. You never want to rub or scrape or glide your finger across. Just pat it using a little bit less force because we don't want to damage that eye. So if I don't use my ring finger, another great way to do this is to do the um, flat brush with a little bit of MAC Fix Plus on it. We'll also set it the exact same way. But like I said, my methods go back and forth. I've just been really into the ring finger method at the moment because it's a little bit quicker than the MAC Fix Plus. You really get the same effect because you really get very pigmented, metallic-y shades using either method. Once you have done that, you want to take the color creamsicle on that same fluffy brush that we started out with and just blend in that transition shade. Again, kind of going down a little bit where we started that first um, green color at because we want to blend that together so we don't have that harsh line of here's the green and here's the creamsicle color. You may get a little bit of pigment onto your big fluffy brush, which is a-okay -OK because once we finish that, we won't be using that brush anymore. Next, I'm going to be going back into the Jaclyn Hill X Morphe collection, going into the shade Inside Job once more, tapping off the excess. And then I want to kind of just clean up that area where I had done a cleanup crease color. I want to make sure that my lid color and then my outer corner color are blended together and it's not just 
metallic and then dark we want a cohesive blended unit there and it also kind of deepens up that shade that eye shade as well out there once we are finished with that and it is looking good oh hold on i need to go wash my hands and it was hot and all that blending that blending was some cardio today that's my workout for the day we had to get some water breathe and then we're back and ready to go y'all so I opened up my blush, but then I realized I still got white stuff all over my face. So I'm going to be taking a bigger domed shape fluffy brush and just kind of wiping away all that underneath powder, all that fallout. If there was any from the shadows, want to wipe all that away. Want to wipe away the one that's underneath your bronzer as well. Because we are baked at 350 degrees and we are looking like a nice little Grinch cookie right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you just want to make sure that you do get all that powder off because I have walked out before with it on. <laughs> Next, I'm going to be taking the Wet n Wild Blush in the shade Mellow Wine. And I'm just going to be putting that all over the cheek area, kind of going up toward where my bronzer is because I want to make sure that those blend together so I don't have a bronzer and like a white line and then blush. You want to make sure that it's all cohesively blended. This is one of my favorite blushes of all time. For one, Wet n Wild is a great price point and it's good pigmentation, good color going on. So once we have all of that blended in and oh, blush is just so pretty. I love blush. It's definitely probably one of my favorite things of all time is blush. And then I remembered highlighter became a thing here back in the day and I love highlighter. So I'm going to take the ColourPop highlighter in the color Flex Terrini. This is such a beautiful highlighter if you're a lighter skin toned. My favorite way to apply this highlighter actually is to take my finger and to dip it into the highlighter, kind of swirl it around and then just tap it on because the highlighter isn't liquidy but it's not powdery. Um, so the best way I found to apply it is with that ring finger. I think it gives the most color payoff and just the prettiest finish on there. And as you can see, I kind of go back and forth, um, just highlighting that region. And I kind of go over that same area that we put the blush in. You want to make sure that that is blended in that area. Again, you don't want the harsh lines of the highlighter, then the blush, then the bronzer. I'm just going to go up and down my nose and just make sure that I look like a shiny Jim Berry. Was it shiny the Jim Berry? Reindeer? I'll make a song up later. We'll work on it. All right, once you have a very highlighted nose, I accidentally dipped my finger into one of the shades in the palette and just kind of scraped it. I'm clumsy. It'll be okay. I want to take a fluffier brush that's kind of got more of like a flat surface on it. And I'm going to be taking the color Creamsicle, which is that very first transition shade we had laid down. I'm going to be putting that underneath the lash line and dragging that out. Now, using a transition shade will actually cohesively bring the look together, but it also will make sure that you have a dragged out lash line without being too harsh with two darker colors that are brought down. Blending and blending that out together. See how like the transition and like the bottom lash line match now? Um, I'm going to be taking a flatter brush this time that's a more solid and a tinier brush. And I'm going to be taking the Vault Collection in the color Inside Job again and just kind of lightly patting it in there. And then what I want to do is I want to focus this color mainly on that lash line as close to the lash waterline as you can get. Because we want it very sexy and sultry. That's why we're putting the darker color on the bottom. But we do not want it as far down as we just drugged out that creamsicle color. And again, doing the exact same thing to the next eye. Just putting it as close to that waterline as you can get it on the tight line. And just keep blending that out. And you kind of can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just kind of still blending it together, keeping it right on that tight line. Once you have that done and you've made enough faces in the mirror, we're going to go back in with that same flatter headed fluffy brush. Um, we're going to go in with the shade Creamsicle again. And what you want to do is you want to make sure to blend that dark shade of the inside job with the Creamsicle. 
And what that's going to do is that's going to help them just not being creamsicle and then inside job is like a cohesive blended and kind of smokes that area out as well. All right, next what I want to do is I want to get a domed shape brush again. Now this one is a very small dome shaped brush. It's a little bit more solid. I'm going to be dipping into the shade Flex Torini by ColourPop, which is the same highlighter we used. And what I'm doing, and I didn't realize you couldn't see it, is I'm just highlighting the inner corners of my eyes because it just makes your eyes pop a little bit more whenever you have that inner corner highlight. It kind of makes them, I don't know, give the appearance of like a bigger look, but it, it just I think it just ties it together. Like I said, that's all I'm doing is I'm just highlighting that inner corner there. And it's such a beautiful highlight for the inner corners. Next, what I'm doing is I'm taking the shade Flex Trini again, and I'm actually putting it underneath my brow bone. Now, I love to use the same shade, so like if I highlight with the color, I try to do my brow bone as that color, and it kind of makes it cohesive and coherent in that it all kind of works together in that area. And like I said, this is such a beautiful color to highlight any part of the face with. All right, you guys, so I just threw on a little bit of mascara, a little lipstick, and then I was like, oh my goodness, something is missing from my look. And of course, it was glitter. So I'm going to be taking the Revlon, um, I think these were like a glitter cream eyeshadow duo back in the day. I don't even know if they sell these anymore. But this is the color Desert Dazzle. And I'm going to be taking that glitter shade on that brush and just kind of going in that crease area to kind of add a little oomph to it. And it just adds a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of accent going on. You can really use any shade for this or any brand. I know Stila has really good glitters. ColourPop has some liquid glitter, or not liquid glitters, but liquid eyeshadows that I've used before. Just with those, um, they have more of a dofa applicator, so you may want to use a brush to kind of get the same effect out. Dipping back into my glitter shade. I'm just making sure that I get off the excess because I don't want too, too much glitter on there. Doing the exact same thing. You're just going to focus on mainly going kind of toward the inner corner all the way out to where that darker shade is where we started to blend the inside job on the outer corner. You kind of want to go all the way toward that area. So mainly where we set the lid color at is as far out as you want to go. This just adds a little accent, a little funness to it, and just a little bit of glitter, and I love the way that it looks. Once you have done that and you got some glitter going, you just want to let it dry, so give it a little fan and fan and fan. Done. All right, you guys, this is the finished Grinch Green. I, oh my goodness, it looks so good so green so festive i feel in the christmas spirit oh my goodness thank you jim berries for watching bye y'all